In this video, I'm going to introduce two different methods for using Archicad's hotlink modules to set up your model content plans. Now, the first method will be all about using just a single project file and creating a module within. The second will be by linking a library into an active working project file. So let's jump into Archicad and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so here we are in Archicad and we are talking about the first method for using hotlinked modules. Now, in this particular project file, well, this is actually the, uh, the USA version of the C5D estimating pack application. This is really the, uh, the default Graphisoft template from uh, the USA. And what we've done here is we've really placed a lot of different model elements from zones to doors, windows, walls, beams, columns, stairs, railings, and, and so on. There's a lot of stuff that's been placed into this actually from the favorites that were originally set up here. And uh, we've certainly gone through and added a few extras, as you can see, for MEPs and a few other trades. But uh, the, the power of this is by placing all these model elements into the floor plan here and into 3D, we have the opportunity of going through and assigning all the right properties. So um, people always ask, what's the first step in setting up a, uh, an Archicad template? Um, this is really what I recommend because it's going through, it is uh, placing model elements. It allows you to go through and start really uh, tweaking on the settings, whether it's um, how it looks in 2D plan and section uh, to get all those visual settings right. You know, the pens, the fills, the materials, all of that stuff. Um, so I always recommend having a placed visual favorites uh, file here and that's exactly what we're looking at in this particular case um, the problem with this is it starts to clutter up all of our different reports so if we pull up some reports here we can see that we have a lot of different model elements that have been um, obviously pre-reported which was the whole purpose of this so that we can get the settings right um, but the problem is all these elements are now um, being reported when uh, we don't necessarily want them to. So um, in order to separate these out and keep them from being reported onto all of these different, uh, these trade reports that we've set up, we can actually use the hotlink module method for taking them and excluding them. So, so let's walk through that step right now. It's very, very simple. And um, we can always go from having them embedded as library parts or having them embedded as a hotlinked module. So um, all we need to do is we can simply just do a marquee around this. We can select everything within it. We actually don't even need to select them. We can use the marquee for creating this module. But what we want to do is we'll go to our file and under external content, we have the save selection as module. Now, this is the function within Archicad for taking all of these model elements here, and we can package them up into a uh, .mod file. So this is a module file. And so here I'm just going to call this, um, this is the C5, C5D estimating pack library. Um, or we can call this the model content plan. And so we have one option here that's really important. It's this option right here for replace selection with this hotlinked module file. So when we check this and we go ahead and save out this module, what it's going to do is it's going to take everything that we have selected here and it's going to embed it as a placed module, which is really, really powerful here. Um, now we can go into the settings and take a closer look at what we have uh, set up here, um, but we'll, let's, we'll just let this run for the moment and let this reload. Okay, so there we go. We now have it placed as a module. So if we go and select things, you can see the little corner icon here has changed its shape. It's no longer a black dot. It's now like a tan uh, square with an empty uh, kind of center to it. So we can tell that this is now a hotlinked module um, because of that notification there. If we 
um, unsuspend our groups, you'll see that everything here is uh, selected and this is all one grouped hotlink module. Um, let's go and take a quick look at our settings here. So if we go into our hotlink module and we go into our hotlink module manager, we can start seeing the settings that we have here. So we can actually see that this is placed now as that hot, the model content plan. Um, we can, uh, we can relink this to a different one if we wanted to. Um, but we can go in and um, we can actually start uh, going into our hot link selection settings. And then here we can actually see that we have this assigned to a master layer called modules, which is perfect. Um, I'm glad that defaulted onto that layer. Um, we can actually give it a master ID. So often I like just giving it like, you know, three stars or something to tell myself that that is a module, or you could just give it a model content plan with the space, or you could call this whatever you want, really. Um, combination of the two. Um, so we'll just leave it for that, at, like that for now. Um, of course, we have other settings here. We can um, adjust elevation to story project settings, which is fine. That's actually where we saved it from, so that's not going to change anything. We can adjust the height. So if we started changing the height of our story settings, the module elements would, also, would actually change and adjust as well. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And so now when we zoom in here and um, go into one of our walls for an example and we suspend our groups we select this we can see that now this wall has that prefix that we had set up here but the important thing to note is if we go back into our uh, schedule here we can see that all those model elements have been cleared out and the reason for that is because we have embedded into all of our different schedules here to exclude any hotlink source. We could also go in and specify to exclude just that single hotlink source if we wanted to have other modules being displayed and reported in our schedules versus having um, uh, you know, all of them being uh, just excluded from our schedule. So now we can click through here. We can see that all of these reports are going to be cleared. But anytime we go back here, we can go in and say grab, you know, pick up the settings from this hotlink module. Um, and then we can go and start, you know, placing columns. We can, you know, do like a matrix on them. Let's just do an increment and spread. We'll go like, I don't know, 20 feet this direction. We can spread it. We can go 15 feet in this direction. And now we have a bunch of different columns here. And we can see that we can add a lot of different columns here. So there's all of our different columns. They're all set up with all those properties that we had defined. And that's an easy way to then use this hotlink module for grabbing all the model elements with their appropriate settings that we've already, you know, gone through and dialed in for our reporting purposes, as well as our visualization purposes. And so that's just, that's how this is intended to work is it, uh, it becomes an easy way of just going through picking up settings here. Um, starting to model, picking up walls, you know, we can click around, have those walls set up. We can pick up uh, roof elements here and go through and just quickly start building a little structure here. And of course we need to make a few little adjustments, but by doing this, we can start reporting content through and now we are only looking at model elements that have been um, placed that are excluded from our hot links. So um, pretty powerful stuff here. Um, okay, so that is the first method of taking a hot link module um, or taking the contents of our project file and linking it in um, just to show you again how that works. Um, and we can actually go the other direction here. We can actually take this and we can break our hot link embed the elements. So by doing this, what it's going to do is it'll, instead of having this as a hot link module, it's now kind of reversed that same process. And so now all of these, they're still grouped, we can ungroup them, um, but now they are back to normal and they will be reporting just as they were before. So we can, we can set these up, we can break them, we can go back and forth, and there's really no consequence of doing that um, at any point in time. We can just simply go back through, select them, module them up again, and it's quite 
simple. So save selection as module, we'll save it, override that one, we'll replace it again, and there we go. So we'll replace it, yes, and now we're packaging it up once again, and it will be excluded from our reporting. So, um, so yeah, once again, this is really kind of the starting point that I always recommend uh, people that I'm consulting to to begin with, just by laying out all their model elements and really start defining their um, their office standards in this type of format because you can see it's really easy to go back and forth from a module to a placed element and by doing so we can exclude all those elements from our report so okay so that is method one method two is really a similar workflow but um, we can actually take this one step further. So what I'm going to do here is I'm pulling up the ContraBIM virtual library. And you'll notice this is, you know, as I start to zoom in here, this is just a massive library of a lot of different model elements that have been placed. So here we have a range of different wall foundations, column foundations, uh, perimeter drainage and insulation. So this is all set up based off systems. We have special foundations slab on grade, we just have a wide variety of different types of model elements that have all been predefined for reporting um, for multiple different purposes here. So this is what a full library really looks like that um, has really been fine-tuned and set up for a number of different wall types, um, you know, kind of spanning lots of different types of materials and finishes. And so this is really... Um, how I've set up my own system, but it becomes kind of massive when you start thinking about linking this entire thing into an active project file. So that's where the model content plan really comes into play and becomes really useful because we can take the contents from this, you know, this massive library that has way more in it than what we'll use in any given project. And we can start taking this content and really start loading it up here so that we can dial in exactly what we want to have included in a project file. So this is what I call my model content planning or a module builder. And within this, uh, really, it's, it's, this is really set up the exact same way as the larger uh, library here. You can see the headings are the same where we have foundations, basement construction, superstructure, exterior enclosure. So here you can see the specific wall types I want to use on this particular project file. You can see our roofing types that we've gone through and pulled out, our interior partitions for basement walls, um, typical interior framed walls. Um, so this is really where we go through and we kind of uh, massage the model content plan to match what we are trying to deliver in the project file. So how this looks in um, in 3D here, if we just pull this up, you can see it's a very much just kind of refined down view of the larger library. Um, if we pull this up here and we select all, we only have what, like just under 300 elements here versus over like 2000 elements in the full uh, library. And so this is just a way of kind of boiling, boiling down the content, defining the scope, and making sure that we have all the settings uh, correct. And similarly here, um, we can actually leave this not as a module, but we can leave this as just placed model elements. But the workflow is the same here. So we can grab this, we can select it, we can do a file in external content, save selection as module. And so now I'm actually going to back out here. Um, we'll go to training, ContraBIM 2020, example project. We have our open BIM and our modules here. So here we have our tutorial module for French inspired. You can see that's exactly the, you know, what we were working with here is our French inspired uh, two story split level. So we can, in this case, we would want to uncheck this where we just want to override this particular file. We can save it. Let's replace it. And then as soon as this is done saving out, we can jump over to that active working project file here. So we'll jump over to this project file. Um, I've made just a few little changes here. Um, so we can zoom in. I'm going to select this and let's just... Um, 
hotlink module. Let's update the module. And so it's running through, updating it. I think I've added a few extra labels here. So you can see that now we've added those labels in. And there we go. So um, with that, it's uh, quite simple to just, you know, add content into this new module. And once again, all of our reports here, they're all going to be separated out where, um, like if we go into our reports, our estimating, our cost reports, go to concrete again. Um, because I, that's about as far as I've gotten on this particular project. But here we can see all the content. We grab it all. We can pull it up in 3D. And okay, there we can see our active working project file. But then again, we are not using any of our concrete elements coming from our library. So um, it's just a way to move content from one project into another in this case it is uh, moving from our um, working library where we can continue to go through um, grab more content add it to our model content plan and then we just save it off and link it into our active uh, project file here and what's nice about this once again is we can have this set up as a module for our library and so most of our views here like if we go back into um, like our construction modeling view we can go into like a foundation view we can pull this up here and it's really going to be excluding all of that content from our module and we can just turn it off and just only be working in our project file but th at the same time we can pull this up in our model content plan as a worksheet and we can have this set up so that we can really go back and forth where if we wanted to, I don't know, just for the sake here, if we wanted to go in, pick up a, you know, a wall, we can eye drop on that wall. We go back to our foundations and then we can start modeling with that wall. So, um, of course, we got a few settings here we need to uh, dial in. But that's how it works. So, um, so yeah, with that, uh, that's essentially these two different methods. So just to recap, one method would be having your content in your active working project file like this. Um, in this case, it, it would be fine because it's not an overload of model content. But when you start building your libraries to the point where you have so much content in them, that you don't want to link all of this through, that's when you can use these modules as like an intermediate means for packaging up your model content plan, saving it off as a module, and then linking it into your working project files here. So, um, so yeah, that's really how it works. If you have any questions on this, then uh, definitely leave it in the comments section. Um, so just one quick note, this would be kind of an alternative to using the uh, the favorites here but in my opinion it's like uh, in order to set up all these favorites it's really worthwhile placing them first so that you can go through test make sure that things are being reported correctly and then go back in and resave the favorites um, that way you have them as either option um, the nice thing with uh, with having them placed is you can visually see them before you go and grab them and pick them up. Of course, we get a little bit of a preview here in our favorites, but um, there's really pros and cons of doing it both ways. But in order to really test the model elements to make sure that they're being reported correctly, you got to place them because you can't report favorites directly onto your different reports. So, okay, well, that's about it for this, uh, this workflow here. So again, if you like this type of content, then please subscribe to this channel. Um, we continue to put out new content every week, uh, covering a wide range of different topics. And if you have any questions on this particular workflow using, uh, modules for model content planning, then leave it in the comment section. We'll get back to you right away. And I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something and uh, stay tuned for another Contraband video coming soon.